Researchers have used this natural battery to power an electronic chip. The inner ear of mammals contains a natural battery, which is essential for our hearing. Now researchers in Boston, Massachusetts and America have demonstrated that we can use this natural battery to power electronic devices that are implanted in the inner ear. So the researchers have used this to drive an electronic chip and they've implanted this electronic chip into the inner ear of a guinea pig and they've showed that they can get enough energy from the guinea pig's ear to wirelessly transmit a signal every minute or so. This is really exciting because more and more medical sensors are being developed for diagnosis and some of these can be implanted in our bodies. But electronic devices need energy to run them and if we have a device implanted under our skin then batteries might take up too much space and in any case if we needed to change the battery that would require surgical procedures. But if we could harvest energy from our bodies, that would solve this problem. So first I'd like to look at how we hear. Now the ear is made up of three parts. The outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. The outer ear directs and channels the sound. The middle ear amplifies the acoustic energy of the sound wave. And the inner ear transforms that acoustic energy into electrical signals for the brain. So when you hear a sound, the outer ear channels that sound down the ear canal to your eardrum. Then the vibrating eardrum wobbles the little bones inside the middle ear. Now these tiny bones are called the ossicles and they're the hammer, the anvil and the stirrup. They're arranged in a kind of lever shape and this lever concentrates the sound energy onto the tiny end of the stirrup as it enters the inner ear. The inner ear contains the bony spiral of the cochlea, and this contains fluid and a membrane. Now, vibrations travel through this fluid and they vibrate the membrane, which is covered in lots of tiny little hairs. Now, this is the natural battery, because these fluids contain different concentrations of positively charged potassium and sodium ions. And these different concentrations of charges create a potential difference. Then when the hairs move and stretch, these charged particles can travel into the hair cells and they create that electrochemical signal that's sent to the brain. So how does a battery work? A battery works by creating a potential difference in an electrical circuit. And it creates this charge difference by a chemical reaction inside the battery, which means that lots of electrons, negatively charged electrons, build up at the anode. But like charges repel each other. So these electrons don't want to say stay squashed up in the anode. They actually would like to travel to the cathode at the other side of the battery. But they can't pass through the electrolyte of the battery. So they're trapped there until you put the battery into a circuit. Now, if the battery's in a circuit, you've connected up the anode and the cathode, and you've created a means for the electrons to travel. So they travel through this electrical circuit and on their way they'll do any work that, that you put in there, like lighting up a lamp for example. So we've found out that the ear has a natural battery. So this means that in the future ear power could be used to run sensors and devices for diagnosis and treatment. But it's not quite up to powering your mobile phone just yet. Blimey, you're still here. Why not subscribe? The button is here.